Hi, I'm MK Davis. Uh, what you're seeing on the computer screen is a, an alleged game cam photograph of the back of an alleged Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Uh, this is uh, released by Melissa Hovey of the American Bigfoot Society, uh, copyright 2012, uh, about maybe a week ago. A uh, pretty interesting picture. Uh, there are a lot of opinions on the net about it. Uh, seems to be some detail uh, beneath the hair that uh, kind of makes it uh, interesting. Um, kind of what you ask for in a photo if you're an analyst. Uh, you say, well, let's see a clear picture of Sasquatch. And then here it is, and yet there are problems. Uh, I guess the, 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 the most uh, basic of problems is that a still photograph in and of itself is not enough to prove anything. And, and, uh, and I agree with that. Um, however, uh, still photographs of, of sufficient quality do, uh, do provide data, useful and raw data, if you know how to get at it. And uh, that's sort of what I'm doing right here. Uh, this is the raw data uh, as I received it. And uh, what I'm going to do here today is just kind of demonstrate a little bit about how to retrieve data off a photograph. Uh, you see that there's kind of uh, two surfaces there. It's well lit. Uh, don't know if it's a flash. Don't know what the light source is. Uh, although you can assume that maybe it's a flash because it's a ga game uh, 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 photograph, game uh, camera photograph that's just what we're told uh, the, the photograph itself doesn't tell you that so I, I prefer to stay out of the story and just see what the photograph itself tells tells me now I know that there's a bright light source and, and it's illuminated the hair the hair seems to have a sheen to it which causes it to be you know reflective in bright light it's probably not this silvery in real life uh, because of the intense light uh, it causes that to to reflect back into the lens and record as being a little more intense or silvery than it probably is this area right in here would be where the spine would be and the muscles would curve over into that area and therefore they would be uh, reflecting light uh, not directly in the lens of the camera but rather away from it and then it would become uh, darker and as you can see there is darkness there so indicate that there is a curve across the back of the uh, each side of the back into the spinal area you also see that kind of right in here uh, um, with the uh, armpit area uh, so, sort of what you see when a person is uh, you looking at a person's back without the hair you can see under there now what I want to do is I want to see a little more clearly you know under the hair and see what I'm looking at uh, as far as the skin texture and skin, skin goes so what can I do to make that uh, happen well, this is what I found to be useful. Uh, first, I like to uh, digitally uh, use a digital prism, split the uh, photograph into its component colors. So th I'll go to this right here, data type, split CMYK. That's cyan, magenta, yellow, and K means below the threshold um, that you can determine color, which would mean uh, black, basically, uh, or dark purple or dark red, but too low to tell. That's all the information. So I'll click on that and I'll get that color split up. This is that area that's in the K low thresholds. What I'm looking for is where that information of that skin color and texture is in the photograph. Uh, so it's not here. It's not there. You see you can hardly even see anything that you can determine to be skin in this one. And that is yellow. Or rather all the dado but yellow is displayed in here. Okay, all the data but magenta is displayed here, and you can begin to pick up a few things right in here, maybe a little bit right in there, but that's really not what I'm looking for. Okay, now here's all the data but cyan. Ah, now there we see the detail where the skin lies. So I want that skin to dominate, that skin color and texture. I, 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 this is not the same as contrast boosting, by the way. It's, it's just more or less driving the colors apart from one another. Uh, and then we'll use some contrast boost. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it. Then I'm going to go back to the raw image and overlay it. There we go. Now it's overlaying the raw image. Then I'm going to go to transparency. And I'm going to go to about maybe 
35 percent transparent uh, uh, the black and white image that contains everything but cyan okay then I'm going to merge the two okay they are merged and then I'm going to go and use hue and saturation to recover the color okay here we go I'm going to go with about 75 percent I've already worked these out before that's why it's easy for me to go right to them but uh, here we go now that's an improvement all right now we can boost the, the contrast Now I ask you, you know, what, what do you see here? Uh, uh, a marked improvement in what's underneath. I made what's underneath the hair begin to dominate the photograph. You see right there? And then you begin to see a few things that you perhaps wouldn't have seen earlier. Um, and of course this is a, you know, uh, although it's a clear photo, it's the pixel, the, uh, the amount of pixels per square inch is not that great. It was an emailable photograph. Uh, it would have been better if we had the original. But, but nevertheless, there are certain things you can do to help it uh, even along these lines. So one thing is anti-aliasing, which I'll get into later, which is uh, uh, you kind of take the edge off the blocks. You, you make a little, the, the, the little pixelization blocks, if you magnify them, they're in little squares. You just kind of take those edges and you make little black and white blocks, little small tiny ones. And what it does, it just breaks up the geometric pattern of pixelization and, and then the overall picture improves. Uh, uh, now what we'll do is just go into this Gaussian blur which has a similar effect and we just try the, the lowest setting and there we go back off a little bit and now I'll go back and retrieve the original image well let me, let me save this one Okay, then I'll go back and get the original image and put it right beside it. We'll see how much of an improvement we did. Uh, so I hope you can see that there's a lot you can do. Uh, uh, you can only take get, get what a picture gives you. And this picture happens to give quite a bit. Uh, so now that we have uh, a little more data yielding underneath the hair, you can kind of go and use your lasso and, and digitally lasso this area if you're interested in a certain area and boost it, boost the contrast. See what you see. Man, now what, what I see is just highly tasseled hair it's it's in a mess uh, you see some dark areas down here that are look uh, reddish almost raw uh, and I can blink it back out and look at it like that uh, you can also see that a good bit of this hair that you see right in here the hair is thin wispy silky and actually if you follow it originates up on the head So a, a, a good bit of this stuff like this right here originates, you know, up, up on the head there. You see, this is not the ear. This is just highlights of the hair from a brilliant beam of light hitting it. And that's, it's become silvery uh, with a sheen on it. Uh, on the other side, in the shadow, you see this tassel of hair continuing on down in front of the shoulder. Uh, and then the big question is, is this real or is it not? Uh, the photo won't tell you that. Uh, probably a series of photos might help it a little bit uh, if you can animate them uh, which would be a good thing um, what I'm interested in on this photograph here right here is, is uh, you know I've been privy to see a lot of things in my career fooling with photographs especially in the, this genre and uh, I've seen some video 
that seem to indicate that the behavior uh, of a Sasquatch in relationship to light, whether it be uh, you know in the, the normal spectrum or the infrared, is they tend not to walk directly into it, uh, that they tend to keep their backs to it. And I saw this in video, and now I'm, I see that this is you know the case right here. For whatever reason, its back is to the source of the light. Uh, so it, it would be impossible to take this photograph at face value anyway because it's no face to it. It's just the back. But not that the back is unimportant. Uh, every part of a photograph, if it's real, if it were to be real, would be very important. And uh, this, uh, you know, unfortunately we don't know, but it's intriguing. I would not dismiss this photograph out of hand. Uh, I would uh, I would bide my time and wait on more information. Uh, if somebody comes forth uh, and, and says, well, I'm a special effects expert and this is my photograph, I, I would ask that he prove it. Uh, the reason why is because he may be suffering from the John Chambers effect. And, and John Chambers was a guy who did the Planet of the Apes. And uh, later on, uh, people were saying that he did the Patterson film, the famous uh, Bigfoot that walks along the creek bed, looking back at the camera. Well, he never denied it, but upon interview, he said that he, he denied it. This was years later. He says, when they said it was me, I didn't object because it was good for my career. And you got to remember that these people are trying to make something look like it's real. So their very thrust of their job is to create a realistic uh, impression or, 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 or image of something that uh, allegedly is real, like a Sasquatch. So if they're really good at their job, they're going to make something that's hard to tell. Now, uh, but it, unfortunately, if they're really good at their job, or even if they're not so good at their job, their egos are such that they not got, they don't want to say that's, that it could be real. They'd rather say that it's some clever person in my profession, maybe even me, that was able to pull this off to this degree of realism. So uh, that's the John Chambers effect. It's good for the career. A photograph like this is really good for the career if a person can get the credit for having done it, even if he didn't do it. So now I'll leave it at that. Uh, so th this is uh, my little uh, my little uh, examination or a little uh, exhibition of how to bring out detail in a photograph. Is it real? You be the judge.